here today to come out of the closet. I could almost pass for a Noma dude with my white shirt, neat hipsterish beard, my Italian way of talking with my hands. But there is a love that burns in my chest. A love that no man in his 30s would ever confess lightly. Okay, ready? Wait, I'm gonna need a chair for this. I love Lego. There, I said it. But I'm not the only one. My friend and co-founder does so as well. Me loves bricks. I'm so glad he had no idea this clip would end up on this stage. Now it looks like I'm not the only crazy one. You're welcome, Marco. But should I really be ashamed of my love for a children's toy? Of course, we're supposed to mature and get rid of our childish behaviors, right? Oh, Mike, will you ever grow up? Who hasn't been told this by her spouse, parent or teacher? Each time she does something silly or wears something eccentric. And just like that, our spontaneity, our sense of wonder, our spark of creativity go out of the window, brick by brick. I remember one time in my childhood, I was with my grandma. Nonna, nonna! That's grandma in Italian. How do you say here? Bunica? Right? Okay. Nonna, I know. I know what I'll do when I grow up. Of course, now as grown adults, we know in our wisdom that kids want to be a million different things when they grow up. I wonder how many astronauts, archaeologists, Thank you, Diana Jones, and pilots we have in this room. Yet, before we grow out of our imagination, anything is possible and will definitely happen. So, to me, that was a heartfelt moment of revelation. I was a kid and I just realized what my future would look like. Pretty important, right? Tell me, dear grandson, what will you do? She was already smiling, anticipating another childish dream. I will be an inventor, I stated solemnly. <laughs> and what will you invent, kid? Now she was really amused. I'll invent the catapult. <laughs> but they already invented the catapult. Now she was openly laughing. So I'll invent it again. I exited the room, my dreams intact. And here I am, right before turning 30, I've become an inventor. As predicted, I invented something that had already been invented, a pair of sunglasses. Guys, we all know it. Clothes and accessories express our personality and are a part of us. During a typical day, we change the way we look and behave according to the social context. So, why not making the most important accessory, the one closest to the eyes, match your current mood? With mood, you can be fashionable in the morning and unapologetically eccentric in the evening with the same piece of eyewear. We created mood after months of research and development. Me loves bricks. The mood you're seeing in these photos is the current 3D printed prototype. We have developed a Kika's final version with premium materials and improved ergonomics. We partnered up with an Italian glass factory, which is ready to go into production. And now, Mood needs your help. We order your Mood today, spread the Mood among your friends, and rediscover your inner child. Well, let's see. With Mood, you will also get a set of our special bricks. Join the community, suggest your custom bricks, and unleash your creativity. Startups are for kids who never grow old. I'm here today to tell you about my journey, hoping it can inspire you to be that kid who exits room after room full of grandmas. And he keeps working towards his dream, intact. Great image, right? Very inspiring. The problem with this image is that it is perfect and boosts our motivation right just before you start. As soon as your startup is started up, this is what your dreams look like. 
maybe this. A metaphor I find more fitting is, you guessed it, playing with Lego. As kids, Lego taught us to be dreamers. We imagined creatures and constructions that never existed before. We dreamt of amazing, enormous dragons who flew free high in the sky. Our racing minds painted impossible landscapes, populated with high towers. But it also taught us to be grounded with the laws of physics. A dragon needs to be built with actual pieces. A construction needs to stand up against gravity. Sometimes towers fall apart, but there is no fail in a Lego construction. You build, you adapt your construction to what is actually possible, you learn from the feedback of the environment, you improve your plan. Sounds familiar yet? Yep, just like your next startup. You build something and then you add to it, brick by brick. Build, adapt, learn. Build, adapt, learn. Build, measure, learn. The last 18 months of my life were the most rewarding yet. And the most asked question that I get from people who also want to start a business is, what does it take to start? What do I need to know? To which I answer, you don't need much, really. Nah, you're just saying that. No, I really mean it. Don't take my word for it. Let's say you want to build a new brand of sunglasses. What do you need to know to, to accomplish that? Graphic skills? This, I don't even know what I was supposed to, like, maybe something. Like a sense of aesthetics or at least knowing what is cool and what is not? Well, at least some 3D modeling experience. This was supposed to be a 3D thing that is actually a paper. Well, at the very least, you need to be familiar with the eyewear industry. I never worked in it. And here's my dirty secret. Shh, I'm not even a big fan of sunglasses in general. I just wanted to make a statement. Stop taking yourself too seriously. Stop being a consumer. Start being a creator and show your true colors. And I wanted a physical reminder of that. And I wanted that reminder to be fun and hip. Did I pour all my energy into it just because I loved it? No, remember the metaphor with Lego. Your constructions need to obey the laws of physics. They need to take into account the world around you. I tested it. I convinced a friend to, make, to help me with the early prototypes. We did it for fun. Then I saw a potential in what we had. And I went out in the streets. I, I stopped literally hundreds of people, asking them to wear the prototype and make it their own. And they loved it. They kept bugging me about how they could buy it. And then this happened. So then, and only then, I, I saw that it was something. And then I, the team grew and the um, the team grew and like, the, the sunglasses spread all around the world. But remember, Lego, the Lego floor is lava. So, what did my Lego floor is lava challenge look like? And this I truly never confess publicly. My girlfriend knows it, but even my parents don't. Well, in the process of giving all myself to my startup, I ended up completely broke. How broke? No heat and no electricity in my home broke. This happened last December. It was below zero outside. I stayed at a friend's house for a while, but then he couldn't host me anymore and I went back to my home, cold. I didn't really want to ask for help. I felt ashamed and I thought that I needed to deal with it myself. Thankfully, I could resort to my personal activity of consulting that brought me back on my feet in a couple months. And well, what was, this, was this avoidable? Certainly yes. Better planning, better use of my time, etc., etc. But especially, 
And this is a lesson worth posing, a reminding. I fell prey to perfectionism. I could have sold the sunglasses as we had them, right there, 3D printed. People wanted them that, like that already. And that would have financed the cost of starting the, the early production early on. Uh, and we, we would have them at that point. You mean, we are fond of our ideas. They're like our children. And when they're about to leave the warmth of our homes and go out in the world by themselves, we turn into overprotective parents. Wait, no, kid, you're not ready yet. Like, please let me try to fix this and that and this and so on. This is so entrenched in our nature that you can have a million different people telling you this lesson and you will still risk committing the same mistake. Let go of your kid. So what if she's not ready for all the hardships out there? It's not by keeping her safe that you'll make her stronger. Apply to startups? Sell your product or service from the beginning. Do it. So, even, even with the many mistakes that led me to my cold December, uh, Lego Flores Laga, cold December, was it worth it? Certainly yes, of course. I wouldn't change the last 18 months of my life for anything else in the world. 18 months ago, I had no clue about the eyewear industry. And now I'm debating the nuances of materials and shapes that will make the next version of my product shine. I also had no idea how rapid prototyping and 3D printing works. And since then I work with many makers, even going to a large 3D printing factory in New York. Graphics? I still suck at it. But I learned to do what I'm good at and delegate all the rest. Startups come and go, but the skills you learn, the people you meet, the confidence you gain, they never leave you. And they make your life all the richer. Don't freeze yourself by looking at other people's big achievements and comparing your small self to them. And also, don't do it for the glory, because the everyday reality of your startup is unglamorous. You either love putting together its pieces or you'll never witness it growing and stand on its own. Your job is to build it brick by brick, starting now. Thank you.